Everybody, welcome back to the After Hours Podcast. This week, I'm joined by the co-host of the Journey Podcast, Mr. Zach. I appreciate you coming back on, my brother. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. And I took off some time here, so it's nice to uh, have you back here. You make me feel comfortable in the podcast environment. That's good. You should be comfortable. Being that you're the gentleman who helped me get started. So I appreciate you, my friend. I know uh, this week we're going to take a little bit of a a different spin on things with our with our episode. Oh yeah. And uh you know I'd love to get right into it with you. Yeah. Yeah, we uh we did this we did this episode for episode 10 when I first started this podcast called The 10 Hard Truths of Life. And then we just redid it uh, a couple weeks ago with Scafidi and Jake. And what episode are you at now? 117. Wow. Yeah, so 117. So yeah, consistency and commitment. No, but it, it, this is, uh, we like doing this sometimes where like you just find some shit on the internet and it just sparks conversation instead of just like, like we free flow a lot. But I mean, this one is like, these hit, these hit home for us. So, and I'd like to like see my responses now, like yeah. hearing it differently. You know what I'm saying? Like two weeks, how much your life could change, like your perspective on things. So I filmed this like two or three weeks ago. I'm sure my answers will be totally different now. Life changes every minute, my friend, and I've realized that as you get older, as you go through stuff, you mm -hmm. realize that no matter what life throws at you, it's always a different situation, even though it might be similar, you know, it's always a little bit different in, in, a, in a certain way, so I'm sure, like, like you said, from your last time that you did this, I'm oh, sure yeah. life has changed just a little bit, mm -hmm. like it always does, but yeah. Yeah, we'll get into it. So yeah, I'll just read them, I'll read like the paragraph that it has with it, and then I mean like... You give me like what it means to you, and then I'll give it what it means to me. It's different. I'm normally the one interviewing, so yeah, no, I, I it's like good, this, man. It's, it's exciting. Good. So number one, the average human life is relatively short. We know deep down that life is short, and that death will happen to all of us eventually. Yet we are infinitely surprised when it happens to someone we know. It's like walking up a flight of stairs with a distracted mind and misjudging the final step. You expected there to be one, be one more stare than there is, and so you find yourself off balance for a moment, before your mind shifts back to the present moment, how the world really is. Let that reminder be your wake-up call to live your life today. Don't ignore death, but don't be afraid of it either. Be afraid of a life you never lived because you were too afraid to take action. Death is not the greatest loss in life. The greatest loss is what dies inside of you while you're still alive. And in life, you can be comfortable or courageous, but not both at once. So be bold, be courageous, be scared, be, be scared to death, and then give yourself a chance to take the next step anyway. A lot to digest, but I mean... Yeah, it is a lot to digest. And, and going back to kind of what the whole personal development journey is like, and you know, speaking about a lot of the stuff that we speak about on the episodes... You know, something I always like to talk about is taking action in life, mm -hmm. whether it's in the, the personal journey of your life or in business or in relationships or wh whatever it is. I feel like a big, not problem, but a big part of society today is that people let things linger, mm -hmm. you know, personally, business-wise, relationship-wise, health-wise. They think that there's never going to be an end. You know, they think that if I just let it continue, let it continue, that life will keep moving forward. But you realize at a certain point that life is short. There's only, there's only so much time you can let go by without taking action on the stuff that you have to do. So I just feel like, you know, talking about what you just kind of read off, having Lilo on the podcast, you know, a couple of weeks ago, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent that kind of correlates with the line that the saddest thing in life is not doing the things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like people sometimes get comfortable in situations that they, they don't look at, you know, what can happen if I do this or if I make this change or if I go over here or whatever, whatever the case may be. But once you realize that, and I, I've seen this a lot lately, you know, even online, you know, from successful mentors and from people that, have this have a similar platform to, to you know to like we have mm -hmm. you know they say that if if you truly believe something and if you feel that that feeling inside of you that is telling you that you probably should make that decision make that decision 
you know, don't let anything or anybody's opinion hold you back. I feel like a lot of people live through other people and their decisions when, you know, sometimes that choice that you think might be a risky decision or it might not be the best decision, you know, sometimes that choice that you made, you know, might lead to the biggest opportunity, you know, that you've ever had, you know, in, in your life. So I feel like something that I'm focusing on recently is, you know, if I feel something and I put enough thought into it, you know, to understand that it probably is a good decision or a decision that's worth me taking that risk, I'm going to make that decision, you know? So, yeah, I mean, that's, 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 those are some wise words. Yeah, no, I, I, um, yeah, I always looked at it like that life is short. I like, I learned the tough lesson at a young age, like with me losing my mom, like seeing like she died at 49, like she didn't even make it to 50. So to think, you know, now, you know, we're in our almost 30. She only lived almost 19 years more than that. How many do we have left? That's what I'm saying. Like if, you know what I'm saying? But we don't think that we don't think by 49, we're going to get diagnosed with lung cancer and die six months later. Never. And that's why like the decisions we make today are so important for our future self. Like we have to think about our life in the future and do ourself and stop doing ourselves a disservice. Stop doing your future self a disservice by bad habits, you know, being unhealthy, not taking the risks, being lazy, being complacent, letting things linger. Because we constantly do that because we don't understand how how short life actually is. We don't we don't think that like tomorrow you could get diagnosed with a fucking illness that will take your life in six months so then we just take every day for granted and go through the motions and like we're all victims of it people listening you me all of us we're all victims of it you know so like that's my perspective on just like life is short because we just need to be a lot more cognitive on on the on the now on today and we need to think about ourselves when we're 35 40 50 years old like what would our 45 50 year old version adult self say about the 25 to 30 year old self, you know, like, are they going to be like, yo, thank you. 20, 28 year old Dean. I appreciate like all the hard work you did because you set me up to be in a position to like live an amazing life now versus you look back at your younger self. And now you're just sitting there with regret because you're like, you are thinking you got more time than you do. And you don't time is once i hit 25 and then i had a daughter at 26 27 once that all happened in my life i realized how precious time is Mm -hmm. you know you look at family getting older you know my my grandfather on my mother's side died at 61 so you know i never realized that until the last couple of years like wow he died young you know my father's 62 turning 63 now you know and i never realized like even my mother going through a time like that she was in her 30s you know i just looked at it as you know I guess I I didn't realize like it's a part of life and, you know, she'll get over it. You know, it's death. And, you know, looking back now, like I could only imagine, you know, and and you went through something like that. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine what it's like at a younger age to to go through something, you know, like that. And it goes back to kind of everything we always talk about, you know, how you handle each situation is what molds us as people. You know, you obviously went through a situation like that, which is unexplainable, Mm -hmm. especially as a kid, Yeah, you know, and to be able to speak about that now, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're impacting so many people because I feel like people won't feel comfortable talking about something like that. So no, no, the whole life is short thing. Really, as you, people think way young, once you get to 30 years old and you get close to that age, you start really thinking about stuff and you put things in perspective, you know, what, why have I done that? Or what, why am I doing this? you know, for so long and I'm not seeing results or whatever it is, Yeah. you know? So I think going back to the first thing you said about, and what we were talking about taking action and not letting things linger and being a person that realizes that if you don't do that, time's just going to go by and you're going to be in the same position. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, I think that's a very important part of, part of the journey. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, no, that I mean, that's what it says. Like it says right there. It's uh, I mean, we'll finish with this. It was it says the greatest loss is what dies inside of you while you're still alive. Think about how many people sit on their deathbed and they probably think about all the stuff they haven't done 
in their life. Yeah. You know, I feel like we're in a different generation now. You look at people like my grandfather on my father's side who died, you know, seven or eight years ago. I just remember him sitting there on the couch. You know, you wouldn't think anything was different from what it was the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. He just sat there. He didn't complain. He took it. You know, he, I'm sure he was in tremendous pain. He had cancer, you know, but it's just a, it's a different world, you know, nowadays. People are built differently. Um, obviously, some of us have those same similar qualities that mm -hmm. that older generation had, but you don't have people like that, you know, no. anymore complaining to the world. You know, I feel like now people, you know, you want to, everybody wants, you know, sympathy and, you know, all these handouts and, you know, it's, it's, it's why me and why me, but, you know, people like that and that older generation, they just, they thought about everybody else. You know, they were going through a time like that and they weren't worried about themselves. They were telling you, don't worry about me. You know, I, I remember that happening even to a friend of mine going back to high school, my friend, John Coe, he, we were close in high school. You know, once we graduated, a couple of years went by, you know, Gabe and myself got a phone call a couple of years later, you know, our friend's dying of cancer. And we were like, what do you mean he's dying of cancer? You know, him and I went to a concert the year before or what, whatever we had done. Mm -hmm. And it just, it happened so fast. Yeah. And he as an 18 year old kid or a 21 year old kid, I forget what age he was. He didn't want sympathy from anybody. You know, he didn't, he didn't want his friends to see what he was going through. He didn't want people to feel bad for him. He literally called us at the last second and said, I want to say goodbye, you know, come say goodbye. And it's just, they don't make people like that. You know, they don't make people like that. They really don't. There's people like that, you know, but to have people like that and, and see how people really are just so selfless, even at a time where they have nothing left. You know, that just goes back to the point we're talking about. Take action today. Yeah. You know, there's no time. Yeah. There's no time. You never know what can happen at any given moment. Yeah. You know, so that's the crazy part about life. Yeah. You know, but. uh, Yeah. No, see, it's good. See, I told you these are good, bro. You just get yeah. like you one topic and it could like we could, bro, like that's what we were saying on our part. Like we could have, bro, we could have talked about this for a whole hour. You know, like there's so many different avenues you could go about it. That's why I like that's why I love like these types of ones. Um, All right. Number two. To a great extent, you live the life you create for yourself. Your life is yours alone. Others can try to persuade you, but they can't decide for you. They can walk with you, but not in your shoes. So make sure the path you decide to walk aligns with your own intuition and desires. And don't be scared to switch paths or pave a new one when it makes sense. Remember, it's always better to be at the bottom of the ladder you want to climb than at the top of the one you don't. Be productive and patient and realize that patience is not about waiting. It's the ability to keep a good attitude while working hard for what you believe in. Yes, at the end of the day, this is your life. And to a great extent, it's made up of your little recurring habits and choices. May your daily actions speak louder than your words. May your life preach louder than your lips. May your success be your noise in the end. Yeah, it kind of correlates with the first thing we talked about. Yeah. You know, what you think you become in life. You know, so having the right mindset, you know, putting the daily work in, you know, doing all those things to get to where you want to be in life is just extremely important. Mm -hmm. You know, I could talk about this for hours, you know, going back to the whole journey, the personal development journey, you know, making sure your health, you know, everything that the people put on the sidelines, you know, that are in business, you know, like myself or somebody who's you know, who has a nine to five that's stressful. I feel like people tend to not focus on the things that you'll look at later in life saying, how did I not do something like right. that? You know, and put things on, on the sidelines. You know, yeah. like I said, you know, when I started getting into the gym about seven or eight months ago, and even though I slacked these last three weeks, I won't slack again. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started getting into that, that whole gym routine, you know, I realized that, yeah, I mean, we're going to get to a point where we're 60. 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, and we're going to sit there and not have an opportunity to make those changes, mm -hmm. you know, so you cannot let time go by and, and not make the right decisions that you know you have to make. It's difficult, you know, it's challenging, you know, we all go through adversity, we all want to stay in bed sometimes in the morning when we know we have to get up and do something, you know, but getting to a later point in life and having those regrets you know, I can't imagine a feel like I, I don't want to imagine that feeling. So, yeah, you got to take action today. You yeah. Know? And I feel like that's a very important, you know, it's a very important 
thing that people aren't focused on. I feel like people, like like you said before, um, everybody always is kind of like in the mix of how their day is going today and whether it's positive or negative or, or whatever it is. And if you just stay disciplined and you stick to your routine and no matter how you're feeling, you continue to do the stuff you know you have to do, mm -hmm. you know, you can't live a life of, of regret at that point because you know that you did the stuff that you might think about, you know, sometimes I, you know, I'll, I'll finish my week and I'll be like, how did I not do the stuff that I said on Monday? I'm going to do every single day. Right. And then you realize, you know, like I, there's no more time, you know, how many weeks and days and months and years are going to go by that you say something to yourself and you're not going to commit to it. You know, for me, it's like smoking pot. You know, you say so many times, I'm going to stop that habit or I'm going to, make better decisions because I know the result of what I'm doing is not a good one. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no time, you know, and I feel like a lot of people aren't really focused on realizing that it's, it's till it happens. They're like, Oh, how did I get here? Right. You know how you got there. Right. You know how you got there. Yeah. You know, yeah. You make better choices. No, for real. It's like, we, yeah, we, a lot of people, a lot of people wonder, you know, why they're at where they're at. And I mean, what this says, it's like you live the life you created and you created it yourself. Yeah, you did it, you know, right. but like, that's why, like, people are so people are so just living with like a fog, right? Like there's just a fog over their eyes where like people just go through the motions and, and, they, and they take they just take the days and they just go with them and they're almost not even conscious of what they're doing. And like these habits are just so embedded in people. These terrible habits are just so embedded that it just becomes part of their life and they accept it because they're like, Oh, this is me. I do this. Exactly. This is what I do. So it doesn't matter what the outcome is. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't get over this and, and, and it's to, it's to certain extents. Right. So it's like, you can be lazy with your business, you know, with your work and your relationship, right? And you might, your wife might leave you, you might get fired, uh, you know, you might be, you know, bouncing around apartments or sleeping in the car, worst case scenario, you know, that's almost like minor. Then there's the bad habits that, you know, you smoke cigarettes for 20 years or, you know, you drink alcohol every day or you eat McDonald's every single day and then you go... 15, 20, 25 years of doing that and you're 40, 45, 50 years old and now you have lung cancer, you have diabetes, you're in the hospital, your your blood pressure's high, you're you know, now you're sick. God forbid you have a family. It's like not only are you screwing yourself over as a man as a father or or a or a mother, right? You have children and you have a family. Think about them. They love you unconditionally. So now you're doing yourself a disservice by putting yourself through absolute horrible shit, terrible habits that is going to take your own life. And not only is your life going to be taken, now your loved ones are going to lose someone that they love. They suffer. And now it's like you created that life because of your habits, because of your decisions. And people don't actually like think about sit like. For one second, like think about every single take one day and before you do anything, any type of decision, any type of action, you like think about what you're doing. It's true. Like think about the action that you're about to do. Is it is it a high vibrational action? Is it a high frequency action? Is this gonna make me better? Is it gonna put me in a position to be successful? Or is this gonna hurt my health, hurt my loved ones? It takes me away, it's distracting, it's shameful. There's all these things that we don't think about, but 15, 20 years later, when you're on that hospital bed and you're like, fuck, you know, and, and that, 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 that's the fucked up part is like, people don't like nobody. It's like, when is enough enough? And it's like, until it, it until it knocks on your door and it's like, I'm here. It's how most people go through it. As yeah. Soon as it's here. You know, we must become the change that we want to see is mm -hmm. something that I, I kind of, I, I love that quote because like you just said, it's, it's until it happens that people, people are like, how did I get here? You know how you got there. And that's probably, because we haven't experienced that yet, that's probably one of the toughest things to go through in life. You sitting there in that situation that you now can't control when you had the last 20, 30, 50 years to control it. Yeah, there's nothing you can do at that nothing point. It's too late. Point. And that's the thing. like people, And that's when people want to take action. Yeah. That's when people, like when, when you get that, 
that phone call, you get that bad news, you get that test result from the doctor, you know, your wife leaves you. Then it's like, oh, I want to change. It's like, bro, like you had 20 years to change. And now, now that it's stripped from you, because, and that's another thing, like, like, we're not, we're not grateful for what we have. Like usually people aren't grateful for what they have until it's not there anymore. So like your good health, right? Your, your loved ones, your friends, your family, your job, yep. everyone wants to complain about what they have. And like, that's why gratitude, gratitude is so hard. I've been trying to do that, like the journaling shit in the mornings. And, uh, like I, I, I can write what I'm grateful for. And like, if you really sit there with a pen and paper and write down every single thing from small to big, what you're grateful for. I mean, you could fill up like six pages. You know, and then think about, are you actually practicing gratitude daily with those things that you wrote down? And more often than not, the answer is no. You take those things for granted. And then until those things are stripped out of your life, that's the only time you appreciate them. We don't appreciate shit until it's gone. That's how life works. I feel like in every aspect of life is that you don't appreciate stuff till it's gone. You know, that's going back to any, anything yeah. you know, that we've gone through. I feel like that's something that you've always heard. Mm -hmm. Until something's stripped away from you, like you said, you don't realize that I could have done this or I could have done that to make this better or change this. And, you know, it's too late. Oh, this is a good one. I feel like you, you, would, you would like this one a lot. Being busy does not mean being productive. Busyness isn't a virtue, nor is it something to respect. Though we all have seasons of crazy schedules, very few of us have legitimate need to be busy all the time. We simply don't know how to set boundaries, prioritize properly, and say no when we should. Being busy ra rarely equates to productivity these days. Just take a quick look around. Busy people outnumber productive people by a wide margin. Busy people are rushing all over the place, running late half of the time. They're heading to work, conferences, meetings, social engagements, looking at their phones, creating TikToks, etc. They barely have enough free time for exercise and they rarely get enough sleep. Yet text messages, emails, social media updates are blasting out of their smartphones like rockets and their day planners are jammed to the brim with obligations. Their busy schedules give them an elevated sense of importance, but it's an illusion. They're like hamsters running on a wheel. Though being busy can make us feel more alive than anything else for a moment, the sensation is not sustainable long term. We will inevitably, whether tomorrow or on our deathbed, come to wish that we spent less time in the buzz of busyness and more time actually living a purposeful life. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. You know, that can that can lead back to so many things. Mm -hmm. And I guess for me, I could relate business to, to that because. I spend so much of my time and my life on trying to become the best person in my business, you know, that I could possibly be. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I also spend a lot of time on obviously trying to be the best father I can be. That's number one, always. Um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people get stuck in the, in the chase of trying to get to a certain point and how fast can I get there and, you know, mm -hmm. what do I have to do to get there? Whereas if you just take a step back sometimes and realize that, you know, let me maybe pick a couple of things that I should focus on, you know, let's get to a point. And then from there, once we master that, let's take it to the next level. You know, I feel like sometimes people get so consumed with, let me put as many things as I can on my schedule. You know, if I have more to do, that means I'm more successful. You know, I've experienced that myself, you know. Re even recently, I, I used to just stuff my calendar with a million things I have to do for the day. And that's not always being productive. That's sometimes being counterproductive. Because like I said, if you could just focus on maybe a few of those things that you might get the most value out of those as mm -hmm. opposed to doing a million things because thinking that, you know, the more is better. You know, that's not always the, the best way to, to do things. Yeah. You know, so... uh yeah, people get confused with that shit all the yeah. time. They they think because they're they're doing a lot, no, they're they're doing something. It's like, what are you really doing? Correct. You know, because like, well, because like you're running results, you're running errands, you you answered a few phone calls, you you know, you went there, you did this. It's like, yeah, you're busy, you know. And I and I hate when I I hate when also, I mean, I I'm a victim of it too. Like, say you run into someone in public and you're like, you know, people are like, oh, how you been? You know, like I'm just like, ah, oh, busy. <laughs> you know and it's like am i busy you know or like it's also like i don't feel like telling them what i'm actually doing because like they i'm not giving them that because i don't really know them like that but like we say that all the time oh i'm just busy you know or like people like like how you been you staying busy it's like why is that the norm staying busy 
Like, why isn't the norm? Like, have you been productive? Are you enjoying life? Yeah. Are you happy? How's your family? You know, like, are like, are are you following your purpose? Like, are are you are you doing what you love? It's like, whoa, what are you doing? You're staying busy. That's the norm. Yeah, because you could be busy with nonsense. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I, I agree. That you know, is, that is the norm for people to just come out and say, yeah, are you busy? But like you said, you know, how's your family? Yeah. You know, how are your kids? You know, are you happy in life? Yeah. You know, those might be more productive questions that that person might take a step back and think like, maybe I'm not happy or maybe I I did all those things the last week or so. And maybe that's something I shouldn't be doing. You know, so if people maybe expressed, you know, that more than are you just busy, you know, that that might give better vibes to the person that they're talking to. Oh, for sure. Instead of are you busy? Yeah. You know? Yeah, and it's like it's like I mean, like I've I've heard you say it a bunch of times, you know, like everyone's trying to to do a bunch of things at once. It's like you're just master one thing, right. you know. Like, would you rather be okay at f- you know five, six, seven different things and be mediocre, or would you rather be great at one thing exactly. and be the master at one thing, be the expert at one thing? Like, that's what a lot of people they try to like like staying busy. Staying busy is 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 like the worst thing you can do. It's like in the gym. It's like intensity over volume. Right. It's like push yourself to to failure every single rep, every single set. You'll see so much more results than just slamming 10,000 reps of half-ass reps. You know, like... 100%. Yeah, that goes to everything. Like you said, I say that a lot because in business, I feel like sometimes people will try to... Let me try 15 different things as opposed to let me just try what I know works. You know, and then once I master what works, you know, let me take that to the next level right open up to other angles or whatever yeah. whatever it is yeah yeah i feel like people would rather see volume and by by volume i mean yeah try a million different things yeah even in, in even in their personal life start with something start eating healthy don't start eating healthy and then do this 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 and that you know why don't you try one thing master it if you can't do one thing how are you going to do 10 things or mm-hmm. five things or three things yeah you know so that kind of leads back to anything in life I'm guilty of that because I always try to perfect everything at once and it just doesn't work that way. Life does not work that way in any part of no. your life, you know, so to be able to sit back and, and realize that let me focus on this right now. And then once I not perfect, you can't perfect anything. Once I, you know, become consistent at this, you know, then I'll move to the next thing. Yeah. You know, that's, I think a better way to look at life, any part of life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, productivity will always outweigh like being right. busy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just need to be productive, like in what, like you said, like whatever you're doing, like be really good at that for the short amount of time that you're doing it, versus slamming ten, fifteen things in a day. And I also like I'll wrap with this. Like I also feel like people do that because they're scared. Like people stay busy because they're scared to actually dive into something that they care about. And then they realize that they're not that good at it or they or they realize that this isn't for me. So they try to just dilute their day with a bunch of like mediocre bullshit tasks to keep their mind off of what they actually want in life because they're scared to actually attack it. They're scared to go after it because they don't even really believe in themselves. They don't even think that they can do it. So then they do like all the BS tasks, you know, and they schedule this and like they subconsciously try to make themselves feel like, yo, I did a lot today. I was busy. But it's like you didn't do anything towards what you actually want to do in life. Right. You did everything that you despise. You kept yourself busy from for 12 hours. And then you can sit there and like have a beer at night and sit and watch, you know, sports because you feel accomplished because you were nonstop all day. It's like, yo, you didn't do shit. You didn't do anything today. You set yourself back. You know, now you're just tired for tomorrow. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to the line in business work smart. Not hard, work hard, not smart. You know, I think that if you you put a mix of both of those together, you know, that's a recipe for success. If you're working hard on things that aren't productive, you know, in your life or in your business, the result is not going to be anything that you envisioned. Yeah. You know, but if you kind of mix in the combination of working hard because you have to put the time in, no matter what it is in life, in your personal life, in your relationships, in your business, in your health, you know, in your financial journey and anything, if you don't put the work in, you're not going to get the results. No. But if you don't, if you don't also work smart, you know, in line with the hard work that you put in, you're not going to see the results that you want to see. So 
I feel like that kind of goes together. You have to balance a little bit of everything out, and that's what's going to help you get the results that you're looking for. Yeah. You know, it can't just be one or the other. Mm-hmm. You have to put the work in, in all avenues Facts. in life. Cuz. How are we wrong? What are we doing on time? 20 minutes? That's it? No ah. way, 20 minutes. Cuz, 20 minutes is fucking 10 15. 35. All right. 35. All right. Good. Um, all right. um, Number four, some kind of failure always occurs before success. Most mistakes are unavoidable. Learn to forgive yourself. It's not a problem to make them. It's, not, it's only a problem if you never learn from them. If you're too afraid of failure, you can't possibly do what needs to be done to be successful. The solution to this problem is making friends with failure. You want to know the difference between a master and a beginner? The master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. Behind every great piece of art, there are dozens of failed attempts to make it, but these attempts are simply never shown to us. Bottom line, just because it's not happening now doesn't mean it never will. Learning the way on the, learning the, way, on the way is key. Uh, like Learning the way on the way is key. Sometimes things have to go very wrong before they can go right. I love that line. Yeah, I've, and, and I feel like, like you could like relate a lot of this. You know what I'm saying? Like You've had, obviously, a lot more experience like in the business world than me like i've obviously had my fair share of failures with sports but i'm sure like you can relate a lot with it's one thing i guess it's one thing to like fail in your sport right and like not reach the heights that you wanted to but it's also like with athletics it's a lot of like god-given ability size you know what i'm saying like i was never you know like there's four people in the NBA that are six foot one and under, you know what I'm saying? So like my chances are very slim, but like how many successful business owners are there in the world? A lot, a high, higher percentage. So I feel like, like failing in business, you can take those failures and learn and like apply them to your new business so much more. So like, yeah, like what was that like for you? Like, cause I know you've learned from a lot of your failures and mistakes and then grown from them. It's a good point. Cause, cause like you just said, you can't just, fail for the Mets and then say, oh, I'm going to go try out, you know, for the Yankees now. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know, with, with those opportunities, they're slim to none. Yeah, the window is small. Yeah, the window is small. And if you don't take complete advantage of that opportunity, you, you're probably not going to have another one. Because you're fighting against a clock too with sports. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, like. What's your prime from, from 18, 19 to, to 30, to, you know, probably. Yeah. 30, if yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but like yeah. with business, like, bro, you could, you know, you could fail up until you're 55 and then and then make the biggest business in the world. That's the cool thing. The guy who started KFC started when it, when he was 70-something years old. Colonel Sanders? Colonel Sanders started <laughs> KFC in, in his 70s. So business is completely different than any part of failure in life. Or failing in business is different than failing in any other avenue of life. Because like you just said, you can at any given time decide to start something new if what you've been doing is not working, you know, if it gets to a certain point where what you're doing, you're not passionate about, or you're not seeing success, you can move to a different avenue of business Mm -hmm. and say, Hey, I'm going to start this, or I'm going to be the best at this. And there's a good chance that, you know, if you put the work in and you're passionate about that business, that you'll see success. You know, that's the one amazing thing or some of the amazing things about business is that, you know, you, you're typically rewarded for the work, you know, you put in, you know, in, in business, you know, typically monetarily because business, yeah, you love the business you're in, but we're in business to make money, to give our family, to give us a better life, you know, so I feel like you have more of an opportunity to kind of figure out, you know, what's my path going to be in business? And if this doesn't work, I can do this. I'm not saying start something and if it doesn't work right away, do something different right. because I feel like that's 95% of the world that we live in. If I don't see results in 12 months, then I quit and I'm going to do something new. No, you know, there's a, there's a chance it takes, you know, four, five, six, seven, 10 years to get to where you want to be. And that's what we see from the people who have accomplished what we want to accomplish in life. They say the same thing that it's not going to happen year one or month one. It might take five, 10, 15 years to, get to the point you want to be in business, what you envisioned, why you got into that business. So yeah, I'm, I, I understand that, you know, with the business I'm in, I've seen success, I've seen adversity, I've made decisions that I wouldn't make again. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I've gone through the trials and tribulations of how you need to operate in a business like mine to be successful. You know, I see that people a lot of the time spin the wheel. They do things that they're not going to see success from, you know, so I think I've learned to pick a little bit from everybody around me, from the successful people in my industry. And I take a little bit from all of those people. You know, maybe I see him doing this great. Let me add that into my mix. Or maybe I see him doing that, which I, I would never do that, you know, so I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You know, so I, that's how I operate, you yeah. know, in business. But yeah, you have chances in business, I feel like. You could fail and fail and fail and fail again, but that sixth or tenth or fiftieth time, you might hit and strike gold. Right. You know, yeah, Hermosi Hermosi just dropped a clip like the other day. He he had nine failed businesses before before he like opened his gym, I believe. Yeah. Which was, you know, and then even the gym like wasn't a success at the start. Like he was running the gym. Right. He was fixing the machines. He was cleaning the toilets. He was being the sales guy, you know, selling the memberships and then sleeping in the gym. And like he always talks about, which is crazy, you know, uh, when he first did that and he was sleeping on the floor and people knew that all the members of the gym would be like, oh, you know, like, good for you. You know, you open the gym. I respect you, stuff like that. And then like year two came around and he and he and he leveled up. He had a manager. He had custodians. He had a sales team. He wasn't sleeping on the floor. He'd pull up in the nice car. And then the same people that were rooting for him when he started would be like, oh, Mr. Big Shot, look at you now. And he's like, yo, you were the same person that was rooting for me when I was almost probably on the same level as you. So that's why he was like, you know, people want you to do good, but never better than them. And that was when he realized that. And like, it was just a crazy thing. Like the same exact people that saw him sleeping on the floor, like were so happy for him. But the moment he pulled up in the nice car and had a whole staff, they're like, oh, big shot. That was the Bronx Tale line. They always want to see you do good, but never better than them. Yeah. It's a famous line from the Bronx yeah. Tale. You but know, that's, uh, that, I feel like that's, that's everything in life. Oh, yeah. There's certain people that aren't like that, you know, because. Oh, of course. I, I can name a few people in my life that, you know, if you experience success or anything that's positive in life, they'll they'll root for you, you know. But then you have those people that aren't like that, and I can I can never understand those people because ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, those people are not where they want to be in life. Of course, that's why they're projecting their their hurt onto you. Correct. It's nothing. It's like that's why, like in the Four Agreements, one of the books I you ever read that? No. Four Agreements, like one of the agreements of life. It's like the Four Agreements of Life that you should take into every situation. It's like don't take anything personal. And it's hard. It's hard to like not take things personal, but it's a great, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I like the hate you get on social media or like in your day to day. It's like it, you should feel it like be the bigger person, like feel more empathy for that person. Cause like for them to go and project what they think of you, like their opinion on you, like un totally uncalled for, they're talking to themselves, you know, like they're like anyone who's happy with themselves, one, isn't doing that like you're not talking shit to people nope. and two if you are getting hate you're probably doing something successful you're probably doing something good like people don't hate on people that ain't doing shit you know you have to be doing shit to get hate yeah that's the crazy part of life because people i feel like make fun of people when they're down maybe not in a way like hey i wish that you're down and i, I hope that you are a failure but they don't respect the person that's down. But then if you look at when that person's up and they're the best version of themselves and they're at a point where you want to be in your life, mm -hmm. you know, why is it a similar, you know, why is it a similar, you know, outlook on that person? You know, why is it when they're down? Like, nah, like, why are they down? Like, uh, you know, that person sucks. Yeah. You know, but then also when they're up, you also don't respect that person because now they're somewhere where you're not jealous so jealous yeah yeah i've never maybe it was how certain people were raised or i'm not sure how it how it is or why it is that way but i always even to this day i always want to be in a in a room and surround myself around people that are past where i want to be in life i want to be like that person you know i want to be around those people you know he accomplished that or he's the best father you know, he did that for his family or mm -hmm. whatever it is. I want to be around people like that. But most people, they say they want to be around those people, but they, they envy those people. You know, they, they look at that person like I'm in competition with them. 
And life doesn't work that way. You know, I would never operate that way. I want to see people do better than me. I want to be around people that are better than me. Not better than me as a person, but better than me in, in what I'm trying to do in my yeah. business or what, whatever it is. Yeah, and also the thing with that, right, when people are envious and jealous, not only are they jealous of what you want, right, but they only see the success. Right. It, that's what, like, ties this thing in together, like the failures. They don't – a lot of people don't see the shit that you had to go through to get to that point. Correct. They just want to be in that position, but they're not willing to go through it. Like I saw Chris Williamson speak about this, about Tiger Woods. He used like a great example. He was like, everyone wants to be Tiger Woods. Best golfer on the planet. Best, possibly best of all time, right? He goes, yeah, you want the life that you see Tiger has right now. But would you go through everything that Tiger had to go through as a kid when his father, you know, at nine years old would be cursing him out on the golf course saying these white people will never accept you and calling him the N-word and, you know, saying all these things and then, you know, battling the injuries and, and then the, the drug addiction and, and the painkillers and then the divorce, all this shit that Tiger went through with this life. You just want the good things that happen in his life. You don't want to endure all the bad shit that he went through. So true. And that's why, like, I say this quote all the time. I saw this and, like, it really stuck with me. It was like, you're sitting down, you and God, face to face. He says, what do you want in this life? You tell him exactly what you want, your end goal in life. So he goes, okay, I'll give you that, but I'm going to tell you every single thing you're going to have to go through to get that. And after I tell you that, do you still want it? And most people that would hear all the shit that they had to go through to get what they want, they wouldn't want that thing anymore. Right. Because the amount of shit that you're going to have to go through, the heartbreaks, losing loved ones, failures, the self-doubt, all the shit that we go through, the trauma, the anxiety, all that shit, probably times it by 10, would you, you got to do that to get this. Do you still want that? And most people don't want that thing that bad. They just want the the, the straight, easy route to that thing that they, that they think they want, the dream. And it's like, if you want that, you have to go through this shit. So that's just like a, it's a super cool perspective to have because it's like, we all, we, we talk about all the things we want, but then if like God, or, you know, or we could see a list of like, all right, well, you got to do all this to get that. You got to have all these failures. Would you still want it? That's where most people, you know, won't, won't put the work in mm -hmm. because, like you said, everybody looks at the results and you're here and how'd you get there, but they're not going to put the work in to get to that point, you know, so that's a good, it's a good correlation with Tiger Woods because people yeah. look at where he is now in life, but yeah. would you go through those challenges, you know, whether they're self-imposed or not, you know, whether he controlled them or not, would you actually go through those things? To get to that point, be a billionaire, be who he is, you know. Most people wouldn't, you know, but they, they look at that great life, you know, and they think that they'd be willing to put the work in. But you, you can't until you actually go through some of those things. I feel like that's kind of hard to hard to say. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, like bro, like more more money, like more money, more success. Like, I mean, like you've obviously had like more success, more money than like even like I have. Like, I'm sure like that just came with more responsibility. It does. It comes. You know, with a like lot of obviously, there's more. Like I do believe. I don't know if like money buys happiness, but like I think money, like you, like you've said, like money buys you the freedom to do the things that you want to do and buy the nice things and and Correct. and provide for your family and stuff like that. So of course, money is a tool for that, but it also there's like you know there's a yin and yang to everything. Like also there comes added responsibility, stress. You know, like people may even start asking you for shit. You know, you see the NBA, the NFL, the athletes, the professional athletes, as soon as they get that check, as soon as they get that money, everyone starts calling. Can you pay my phone bill? Can Find you pay my house. rent? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I forgot who it was. I, Michael Beasley. You should watch this pod. It was on the pivot. Do you know Michael Beasley? I don't, I really don't. He honest. was, uh, he played for the heat for a while. Lakers, Knicks bounced around a few teams was like the number two overall pick in, at, uh, out of Kansas state a okay. couple, like 10 years back. Um, Sorry, Michael. <laughs> he had an amazing podcast, though, on The Pivot, and he talked about how, like, everyone, he goes, everyone from my mother all the way down stole from me. 
he goes, I had, you know, I'm paying phone bills. I'm paying rent. My agent's stealing from me. My mom's stealing. Everyone is just, t-. he goes, I didn't know what to do, you know? So it's like, everyone, yeah, I want to be the number two overall pick in the draft. I want to be in the NBA. It's like, maybe that's some of the shit that comes with that. Like, are you willing to go through that? Like, his own mother was stealing from him. That's crazy. Sick, you know? And, like, and he's, and he dealt with a lot of mental health shit. Like, he broke down on that episode crying, bro. Like, he was just like, like, I'm tired. I'm tired. He's out the league. He's not in the league anymore. Like, he got, he got, per, like, um, like, perceived as this, like, type of guy, like, who smoked weed. He got caught with weed a few times, you know what I'm saying? But the dude could hoop. But it's just crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people want, like, these lives, but, like, they don't understand what comes with it. And if you don't have the right support, that's a whole nother thing, you know? Like, he was, it looked like he was sitting there by himself. Like, he's a dude from the hood that came up, like, from nothing. You touch fucking $15 million, you don't know what the fuck to do with it. Yeah, it's unbelievable. How long are we rolling for? Uh, well, we could finish number five and wrap. It's so bad. Yeah, no, yeah, we could. All right, we'll finish number five. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, right. and then we could do like a part two with Geo or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy, man. To seeing what these people actually go through, everybody always wants, like I said, the end result. Mm-hmm. Uh, dealing with the trials and tribulations of what you go through to get to a successful life, or what, whatever it is, not even being successful. You know, to to get to a point where maybe you didn't accomplish that goal. That's even harder, probably. Oh yeah. You know, so that's. I just life, you know, and that's 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 what that's what makes us who we are. For you know, sure. So all right. Number five. Thinking and doing are two very different things. Success never comes to look for you while you wait around thinking about it. You are what you do, not what you say you will do. Knowledge is basically useless without action. Good things don't come to those who wait, they come to those who work on meaningful goals. Ask yourself what's really important, then have the courage and determination to build your daily life around your answer. Remember, if you wait until you feel 100% ready to begin, you will likely be waiting for the rest of your life. Yeah. No, I like that. I I love that one. I I remember I remember I, I said this quote. I don't know, last year on like a caption on like Instagram, but it was yeah. like, like it basically like says that like, like people, like people wait to take action when they think everything's perfect. They're like, Oh, everything has like, this has to be this way, this way, this way. And then I'm going to start. The stars aren't aligned. I'm not doing it. It don't work that way. It's like, you have to align the stars. You got to figure it out along the way. But that, that's the thing. Like it's, it's very hard to do that, but like people wait, all this time to like start living their life or start chasing their dream. And like, you're just going to wait for the rest of your life. It's never, there's never going to be a perfect moment to do what you think you should be doing. Like nothing, everything, like there's going to be something wrong in your life. There's going to be something fucked up, whether it's financial, family, a relationship, friendships, business, something is going to go wrong. And if you're waiting for all those things to be perfect, then to start your, your, your passion, It'll never, it'll never happen. It's never going to happen. You know, if you think that you're going to be aligned always and everything's going to be perfect and, you know, you're not going to, you know, always go through the trials and tribulations, like I said, to, to get to that mm-hmm. better point in life, then you're sadly mistaken. It's not a perfect world. You know, life is challenging. As you get older, you go through things that you could never imagine. You know, so if you're going to sit there and think that things are going to change without putting the work in, and without being the best version of yourself, like we always talk about, then you're not going to get the results that you're looking for. You know, it's going to lead you down a path that you're not going to like the result, you know, of what that path's going to be. So it takes work, man. You know, and that goes back to all the stuff that that we talk about usually, you know, on the, the episodes is that if you're not going to constantly put the work in into yourself, you know, into your business, into, you know, just life in general, which will naturally allow you to give that better person to the world, you know, you're not going to get to where you want to be. You know, you have to put the work in. It's a daily grind, you know, getting through the emotions, getting through the ups and downs, you know, getting through not being successful right now or w- whatever it is, you know, so it's a constant grind, man. It takes yeah. work. It takes work. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it funny? Like, just think about all the shit we said, like, and then like, we'll, we'll watch this back. I mean, 
yes, we're giving advice, but like we're also speaking to ourselves because it's like we're like I'm not even close to where I want to be in life, you know, and that takes work, you know. But even like even the things we're like telling people to do, we're not even applying it to ourselves. Like the hardest thing to do is follow your own advice. It's so much easier to go out and tell someone what to do than actually do the thing that you're telling other people to do and like take your own advice and like take action on it. It's so hard. I do it all the time. Like on my podcast, like there's been like relationship shit that I've talked about that like I'm telling people and everyone's like, oh, this is facts. Like this is true. And it's like, do it yourself. I'm doing the opposite of what I'm saying. Like I see myself on clips sometimes. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? And I'm sure you do the same thing. You know, like we're, we're preaching this shit. And like, that's why I love the podcast. Cause it almost like holds us accountable. Cause like, oh, all right, you want to have a platform. You want clips to go viral. You want your clip to resonate with someone that changes their life. And it's like, you're not even you're not even resonating with yourself. You're not even following your own advice. Yeah. I mean, what's that famous line? Do as I say, not as I do. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's much easier to give advice because you've gone through those things yourself. Yeah, you might make the same mistakes, you know, but it's easier to tell another person, yeah, I'm doing this. It's affecting me in a negative way. You probably shouldn't do that. Right. It's a lot easier to be that person, to be that advocate for, you know, what you're going through to tell other sure. people that that's not the right path. You know, but when it comes to ourselves, you know, you're selfish. You know, it's it's being selfless with others, you know, while we tell them, hey, you should make that better decision than I'm making. You know, you're selfish to yourself sometimes. Yeah. And I'm guilty of that completely. I feel like I have all the answers for everybody else. You know, but sometimes when you relay that to yourself, you're like, I don't, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Right. You know, so. Yeah, it's, we're. It's life. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. We're. Like, even, like, our self-talk. Like, I'm sure, like, like we talk to ourselves. Like, we would never talk to someone the way we talk to ourselves. And that's important. Like, your self-talk is important. Like, even in the book I'm reading right now, it's uh, The Saint, The Surfer, and The CEO. It's uh, this, this guy, his, his father dies, leaves him three plane tickets to go to Rome, uh, Hawaii, and New York. Rome to meet with uh, Father Mike. Hawaii to meet with The Surfer. New York to meet with the CEO and they all teach him things of business. Right. And like the surfer is telling him like, yo, like the way you talk to yourself, the, the way that you, um, the way that you just speak to yourself, the, the, the thoughts you think, the way that you, the way you view yourself, like that carries with you into your life. If you're constantly talking negative to yourself, downplaying yourself, talking shit to yourself, you're taking that energy and then you are in that next conversation in that next meeting in that next situation. You're going to bring that negativity because you're constantly putting yourself down. Right. So how could you go and pick someone else up and bring high energy and positivity to a situation when you don't even bring it to yourself? You call yourself a piece of shit. I'm lazy. I have bad habits. You're, I'm not happy with myself. There's, there's a difference between accountability and then like self-sabotage, you know, like, I'm I'm a huge advocate for self accountability. I'm my 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 biggest critic to a to a to a to not even not to a fault like to a to a degree of like I know what I'm capable of, so I can judge myself a certain way and not let it weigh heavy on me. But I do find myself like talking to myself sometimes, and I'm like, why like why am I saying that? I, I would never call you a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. But, like, I call myself a piece of shit sometimes, but it's, like, it goes back to, like, all the things we talked about, like, the habits that we're creating. It's, like, we know consciously, like, what we're doing is wrong. Like, you know, like, when you half-ass a workout, like... Why am I even here? Right, like, you can... But that's the thing, like, like you post a picture, I'm at the gym, everyone likes your story, but, like, you know you half ass that workout, so now you're judging yourself, and then that's where that, that negative self-talk comes in, so... It's hard, bro. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, we really got to, like, take the things we're saying from here and actually apply it. You know, we actually have to do the shit that we say. If we actually did the things that we say, we'd be so much better in life. But it's hard. And it goes back, like, what you said from the beginning, like, taking action. Like, life is short. Take action. And it's like, when it, when are we going to learn? When are we going to learn? I don't know, man. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe, maybe we'll learn on the next episode as yeah. we keep talking about this stuff. Yeah, no, so, no. It's uh, good stuff. No, this was great stuff, man. I, I appreciate you know, the wisdom as usual, you know, from, uh, from the podcast, OG, like there we go. you guys. So I, I appreciate you taking the time. I'm excited to finish this conversation on the next one. Cause you know, I love talking about the stuff where 
you know, this is life, man. You know, this is authentic life, authentic conversation that people don't have anymore, that mm-hmm. people are scared to talk about. You know, I love really digging deep into some of this stuff because it helps other people. It helps us, like you said. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, to be a person that will be be someone to give great advice to other people but not apply it to themselves, you have something good going for you. You know, that, that makes you selfless, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I like, you know, having those qualities, you know, to be around people like that, you know you're always going to critique yourself, you know, and be the biggest critic of what you're doing and who you are, you know, and that's going to only lead to better and 